Hi viewers, today we will learn about natural dyes, their history, the advantages and limitations of this and the use of modens and also the theory of dyeing and dyeing the fabrics and other things. Coloring fabrics is a fascinating field that gives scope for creativity, more so in case of natural dyes which are the mysterious colors of nature. Until the turn of the last century, fabrics were colored using natural dye stuffs obtained from nature as they were the only coloring substances available at the time. The muted earth colors yielded by these natural dye stuffs were considered as harmonious as they go together giving pleasing results. The accidental discovery of synthetic dyes in the middle of 19th century led to the near abandonment of natural dye stuffs. Synthetic dyes due to their abundant availability, simplicity in application and relatively inexpensive nature dominated the trade and therefore the unlocking of nature's secret colors became a lost art. Even during the days of glory for natural dyes, there had never been proper documentation except very few or difficult elusive dye recipes being noted down by artists. Thus the knowledge and skill that has been experienced by people you know has been lost and uh, refinement were forgotten. Today the faded antiquity is unveiling due to the concern manifested globally for saving the environment from pollution. Production of synthetic dyes involves many violent chemical reactions and the byproducts formed must be discharged in water or in the atmosphere. The unbridled use of synthetic dye and the non-treatment of effluents contained in the wastewaters of the dyeing process have led to horrendous results and a terrible load on the environment. Synthetic dyes are petroleum byproducts and some of them have toxic or carcinogenic amines that create skin allergies and hazardous to human health. They are non-biodegradable and are deposited on earth causing soil pollution. The world is in the age of environmental and ecological consciousness at present. The environment pollution is gaining importance as being one of the most challenging problems facing the human race at present. Known as the elephant in the room, the textile industry has a heavy impact on the environment. Every year, 1 million tons of different types of chemical dyes are used across the globe. The dyeing and bleaching of fabrics involve chemicals, energy and huge amount of water. Textiles are the fifth largest contributor of carbon dioxide emissions. It is estimated that during the process of dyeing, about 15 to 20 percent of the dyes are not utilized for dyeing and finally becomes the part of effluents. Every year about 0.28 million tons of different types of textile dyes, mainly aromatics are discharged in effluents of textile industries worldwide. Huge amount of effluent dyes tend to degrade into simpler molecules and finally release substantial amount of carbon dioxide in environment. It can be estimated that 182 grams of chemical dye releases around 528 grams of carbon dioxide. Around 2,80,000 tons of dye effluents discharged per year add around 8,12,300 tons of carbon dioxide in the environment which a major component of greenhouse gases responsible for disastrous climate change. German legislation in 1995 has led to the ban of the synthetic azodyes for manufacturing, dyeing and importing textiles and other consumer goods dyed with these dyes. The other European and Asian countries including India have banned the manufacture and use of azodyes. This move on the dominating section of the world has created unstinted demand for natural dyes as researchers are looking forward for eco-friendly products and technologies. This has led to the renaissance of natural dyes globally. In the era of eco-friendly products dominating the trade, 
natural dyes are forecasted to be the future colorants for textiles. Natural dyes have wide scope in fashion industry even though there is restricted palette. The influence of natural dyes on fashion is evident in recent years as these natural colors are in fashion. So let us know what is the history of these natural dyes. It dates back to prehistoric times. India, the country whose dyeing practices have exercised the greatest influence on European dyers from the 16th century appears to have had a dye industry long before the transactions were recorded in writing, perhaps extending to the period of Indus Valley civilization around 2500 BCE. Dyers in India and Southeast Asia not only mastered the art of producing bright colors on cotton, but also developed techniques of printing colors on woven fabric and making designs with resist drying. Marco Polo described in detail its indigo manufacture during the 13th century AD, about 300 years before the Portuguese introduced it into in Europe. Among the ancient people, the Egyptians of the Middle Kingdom not only dyed textiles but also understood the use of modens. The Phoenician dye industry begun in 15th century BCE was renowned for its Turian purple or royal purple obtained from a species of shellfish processed in the city of Tyre which produced a range of colors from red to blue including violet. The Greek physician Discots and the Roman naturalist Pliny the Elder both writing in the first century described sources of dyes and dyeing techniques known in those days including indigo and wood for blue, alkanet and madder for red, weld and saffron for yellow and oak bark and walnut hulls for golds and browns. Archaeologists have found evidence of textile dyeing dating back to the Neolithic period. In China, dyeing with plants, barks and insects has been traced back more than 5000 years. Throughout history, people have dyed their textiles using common locally available materials, but scarce dye stuffs that produced brilliant and permanent colors such as the natural uh, invertebrate dyes, that is uh, Turian purple and crimson combs became highly prized luxury items in the ancient and medieval world. Plant-based dyes such as wood, indigo, saffron and madder were raised commercially and were important trade goods in the economics of Asia and Europe. Across Asia and Africa, patterned fabrics were produced using resist dyeing techniques to control the absorption of color in piece dyed cloth. The technology used in the production of natural dyes was known in China as early as 3000 BCE and among the Indians, Phoenicians, Hebrews and Venetians in the 13th century AC. Later, it was passed on to the Greeks and Romans. It was also known in Africa, Mexico and Peru. The Turkey successfully used the techniques of natural dyeing and because of migrations in the Middle Ages, they introduced these techniques to the world. The French learned to dye cotton with natural root dyes from the Turks in 1715. Now, after knowing this uh, history, let us know what are the advantages, why people are preferring these natural dyes today. Natural dyes produce colors, you know, that are gentle, soft and subtle and create a restful effect. The colors are unsophisticated and harmonized with nature. The color is enhanced with age and mellows to increase beauty. They are obtained from renewable resources. So, production of these dyes at larger quantities is possible. They do not cause any health hazards. They have lower toxicity and are non-allergic and non-carcinogenic. Sometimes they act as health cure also. Many natural dye sources can grow on wastelands which is more economical to produce. Working with natural dyes is labor intensive and hence provide job opportunities for 
all stakeholders in the natural dye value chain. Practically, there are only mild chemical reactions involved in preparation and also in dyeing of these natural dyes. There are no disposal problems existing and natural dyes are biodegradable and exhibit higher compatibility with the environment. They also act as manure and rich the soil too. Use of natural dyes for textile purpose has potential to earn carbon credit by reducing the conventional energy inputs. Natural dye textiles may bleed but do not stain the adjoining fabrics except one or two uh, kinds of or varieties of uh, natural dyes such as turmeric. Natural dyes are UV resistant and provides protection to the wearer. Natural dyed fabrics are generally moth resistant and can be stored safely without any anti moth material. There is a charm and challenge due to the uncertainty of the dyeing results. There is a lot of scope for creativity in using the colors judiciously. After knowing uh, so the many advantages of natural dyes, now let us see what are its limitations. The availability of raw material may be a limitation as it requires lot of planning and execution to grow the source material for meeting the demand. That means that the agricultural land that is being used for production of these food varieties now should be uh, given to for uh, growing of these natural dyes and thus lot of planning is required in this case and that is why it is one of the limitations. And the percentage of color yield is meager around 3 to 5 percent of pigment is found in the source and so we need lot of raw material for this. The colors obtained from each source of natural dye vary with the mordant and the pH of the dyeing solution. Therefore, skilled personnel are required to understand the complexity of the dyeing process. The reproducibility of shades is also a problem as the natural dye source differ in pigment content. The varying factors include the soil in which the natural dye source grow, cultivation practices, the season and so on. The availability of uh, precise technical knowledge of dye extraction from source mordanting and dyeing methods is inadequate. Only limited number of suitable dyes are available for dyeing even though many sources of natural dyes can give the color. Natural fibers such as wool, silk, linen, and cotton can only be dyed satisfactorily using natural dyes. The application of the dyes on other fibers is still under research and uh, you know we need lot of uh, standardization in this case. The difficulty in blending dye shades from different sources limits the use of natural dyes whereas it is very easy to do it in the case of synthetic dyes but it is very difficult in the case of natural dyes to mix the dyes and get uh, different colors. Inadequate scientific backup for standard conditions of natural dyeing which needs to be explored. Natural dyes are generally less substantive with the fibers. This leads to improper fixation of the dye on the fiber even with the use of mordants. Inadequate fastness properties are found in majority of the natural dyes even with the use of mordants. And uh, this is now uh, being addressed at present through research. Then consideration of the cost factor because the it is a labor intensive uh, dyeing or uh, you know extraction process and so uh, we need other inputs also of course we do not have many chemicals but you know the dye stuff and the labor and other energy and all in order to uh, you know bring the higher temperature may be costing little more than the synthetic dye but you know we will be able to address this particular uh, uh, limitation in natural dye through commercialization of this process. So, after knowing the advantages and limitations of these natural dyes, you must be very curious to know what are the sources of natural dyes. As far as natural dye sources are concerned, India had a virtual monopoly in their production and applications. It is evident from the literature that around 500 plants can give rise to natural colors. Few animal and mineral sources 
were also known to produce very striking colors. Natural dyes are extracted from the roots, stems, leaves, flowers and fruits of various plants and dried bodies of certain insects and minerals. If you say you know that you are around you there are many trees, and there are flowers, there are barks, there are roots and there are leaves also. You can try and then you can see whether you will be able to get the color or not. So this is all through experimentation you will be able to know. But we will be able to give you now some of the sources which are known and uh, also which are being used commercially. First of all we will see the, what are the flower uh, dyes. Natural pigments from flower sources generally contain anthocyanins, flavones and few carotenoids. The colors produced from them include reds, oranges, yellow and uh, uh, white ochre shades. And uh, the examples here are flame of forest, fire flame bush, red silk cotton, marigold, cosmos, acacia, rain vadita, singapushpi, saffron, safflower, Ixora, Gulmohar, Parjataka, Thalia, Golden Rod, Balsam and others. Coming to the bark dyes, that means that from the uh, trees we can remove the bark. Sometimes the barks are shed by the tree during the summer season. They can be collected. The pigments from these bark dyes are primarily tannins in concentrated form. The colors obtained from them include mostly shades of browns and yellows. We have uh, examples of Barberry, Arjun Bark, Kikar, People, Monkey Jack, Cochin Gorka, Mango, Eucalyptus, Walnut, English Oak, Chair, Neem, Indian Lebanon, Copper Pottery, Kefa, Sandalwood, Red Sanders and others. But you can try out all the box and see whether you get the color. Coming to the leaf dyes, you know leaves are also sources of color and uh, the pigment is suitable for coloring textiles. The different colors derived includes you know yellows, greens and also browns. The examples are the neem again, the peach, the apricot, lychee, eupatorium, lanterna, teak, golden drop, hemelia, trailing eclipta, wood, indigo, blackberry, weld, lily, elder, all, henna and acalypha. And also we have dyes from seeds, roots and other gum like you know the sources may be anato and uh, we get the uh, orange color from it, we get pink colors from madder and uh, we get light uh, yellow to uh, even greenish shades from pomegranate rin and very dark colors like maroon and others with butea gum. So we have seen the plant colors now, plant uh, sources and we will also see what are the animal sources from which we get the colors. A good example is cochineal which is a brilliant red dye produced from insects living on cactus plants. The properties of the cochineal bug were discovered by pre-Columbian Indians who would dry the females in the sun and then ground the dry bodies to produce a rich red color powder. When mixed with water, the powder produced a deep vibrant red coloring. Cochineal is still harvested today on the Canary Islands. In fact, most cherries today are given their bright red appearance through the artificial color caramel which comes from the cochineal insect. Lack another important animal source also gives red color. Tree and purple 
is another dye from mollus. And coming to the mineral dyes, these include various metal salts and metal oxides. The metal or the mineral dyes most commonly used for dyeing are chena bar, red lead, red ochre, ultramarine ink, white and yellow ochre. Mineral khaki, a mineral coloring matter has been used to dye military uniforms. And now let us see what is the classification, how these are being classified. So natural dyes can be classified in different ways that is on hue, chemical composition and also the application. The color index classifies dyes as per hue. They are classified as yellow, orange, red, blue, green, brown and black dyes. Around 92 natural hues are indexed at present. As per chemical composition, they are classified as anthraquinone dyes, indigoid dyes, flavonoid or flavon dyes, alpha naphthoquinone dyes, anthocyanidins, dihydropyrans and carotenoids. Based on the application, the natural dyes are classified as direct, mordant, vat, acid, basic or cationic and dispersed dyes. And let us see the mordants that are being used in natural dyes. Without mordants, we cannot dye especially cottons and other cellulosic fibers. So a mordant is an element which aids the chemical reaction that takes place between the dye and the fiber so that the dye is absorbed by the fabric. Containers used for dyeing must be non-reactive, that is it must be enamel, stainless steel, Otherwise, what happens is the, uh, the metal or whatever that is present that oozes out from it, you know, it will be taken up by the fabric and then you will not be get genuine colors. Brass, copper or iron pots will be used for mordanting. Not all dyes need mordants to help them adhere to fabric. If they need no mordants such as anato, lichens and walnut, they are called substantive dyes that means that they can come without any mordant without any problem. If they do need a mordant they are called adjective dyes. And now let us see metallic mordants, metallic mordants such as alum, it helps to produce evenness and brightness slightly. Then we have iron mordants which saddens or darken colors bringing out green shades. Tin mordants, they bloom or brighten the colors, especially reds, oranges and yellows. Then copper sulphate, it darkens the colors and brings out greens. And then we have a tannic acid which enhances tans and browns. This is extensively used in for mordanting of uh, many browns and blacks. Tannin and tannic acid is present in barks, leaves, fruits and gulls of many plants and they are mostly used for leather. Among the natural tannins used for textiles, myroblans and sumach are important. The, then coming to oil mordants, they are used mainly in the dyeing of turkey red color from madder. The main function of this oil mordant is to form a complex with alum applied on fabric and make it insoluble in water. Coming to the mordanting methods, we have uh, uh, different mordanting methods. Here you know the selection of the mordant is important as the color shade depends on the type of mordant used and also the mordant method influences the final shade achieved with natural dyes. There are three methods here, the pre, simultaneous and post mordanting methods. It is based on the stage at which the textiles are mordanted and also used depending upon the dye. We have a pre mordanting method that means that the fabric is mordanted or the yarn or the fab fiber is mordanted and then the fabric is dyed. And it is in simultaneous mordanting, the mordant is simultaneously added to the dye bath and the fabric is dyed along with the mordant. And in case of post mordanting method, in this the fabric is first dyed and then mordanted later. And then after knowing all these mordanting methods and uh, what are the mordants used and what are the sources of dyes that are present. 
and we should know how to extract the dye from these sources. The extraction of colouring component from the dye source is it is an important aspect as it influences the shades and control the cost of the dye and dyeing process. The objective of extraction is to extract maximum colour from the source even though the method depends on the chemical composition on the of the dyes. Now, we have uh, some extraction methods that are in vogue. One is the or most important uh, extraction method is aqueous extraction that means that dye is placed in water and then without adding any chemical we are going to extract it by boiling it for around say 1 hour and then remove all the source material and make it ready for dyeing. And we have another method called acidic extraction method. In this you know some of the natural dyes which are pH uh, sensitive they will give a good color when the solution is little acidic. And so, in water the some acid like you know acidic acid is added in order to make it little acidic that means around 4 pH or so. And so, this is called the alkaline extraction and we have another one that is alkaline extraction in which in solution itself in water itself will add little alkali. So, that majority of the dyes you know they give good color in alkaline medium. So, we will just make it alkaline let us say around 8 pH or 9 pH. And then we have another method called solvent extraction that means as the name indicates a solvent is being used in order to get the color from the uh, source material. This requires lot of investment on the part of the uh, you know manufacturer and so and even the recovery of the solvent is also required. So, solvent extraction will be a problem uh, in case of uh, manufacturers who are uh, I mean doing uh, uh, I mean not very uh, commercially, but uh, at the cottage level they cannot afford to have uh, the solvent extraction methods. But even though solvent extraction is costly, but this is definitely effective and it will be able to really uh, take out the you know the pigment content in the source material. And we have another ultrasound assisted extraction process. This has been uh, actually identified recently that is using ultrasonic uh, technology we will be able to get colors from the uh, source. And the, this uh, pigment which is which comes out of this ultrasonication is uh, the dye particles are going to be very very small and thus you know we will have a better uh, extraction of the better pigment content as well as even it assists the dyeing the fibers or the textiles will be able to absorb more of the content of uh, the dye and then it gives bright colors. And uh, another method called enzyme assisted extraction it is nothing but enzymes are being added in order to improve the extraction of the dye as well as and it will be able to assist in during the dyeing process. And uh, we have another very high qualitative uh, extraction method called supercritical fluid extraction. In this give the pigment in a its most purest form and so it is a very costly process because the equipment for uh, doing this for extraction itself is very high and so the manufacturer will be uh, able to produce and sell the particular uh, pigment dye at a very high cost when compared to the source materials. And so, this is generally used for food materials because there you need a very pure pigment. And when it comes to textiles we do not require that much of purity because anyhow it is going into the water and most of these things are eco friendly and there will not be any problem they are biodegradable. You know that all the plants and the trees are going to be biodegradable. And among all these methods aqueous extraction is commonly employed in small scale industries which sometimes is assisted with acid or alkali as the natural dyes are very pH sensitive. If solvents are used for color extraction the solvent recovery is required which needs huge investment and the process of dyeing becomes very costly as I said. Now, see what is the actually principle behind you know dyeing with natural dyes. Natural dyes generally show less substantivity towards cellulosics and others so that the use of mordant is necessary. 
these mordants form metal complexes with the fibers and dyes. After mordanting, the fibers anchored with metal salts attract the dye molecules and form coordinate complexes. The dyeing of textiles with natural dyes generally requires high temperature of 80 degrees to 90 degrees except few blue dyes such as indigo which is dyed at 60 degrees centigrade. Cellulosic fibers are dyed for longer time than protein fibers. Pre-treatment with tannins present in either myroblan or gallnuts is given to cellulosics before mordanting to enhance the color and improve color fastness. Natural dyes work best with natural fibers such as wool, silk, cotton, linen, jute, rami and sizzle. Wool and silk are easily dyed as they take the colors more rapidly or readily than the other fibers. Besides fiber content and mordants, the other variables that affect the color of the natural dyes or the season of the year the dye stuff is collected, the concentration of the dye material, extraction medium, the pH of the dyeing bath and so on. Let us see what is the fastness of these natural dyes. Fastness means generally the fabrics are subjected to washing in use and they are also exposed to light and sometimes we uh, rub it against some surface or we when we wear you know there will be perspiration that is coming onto these dyes. So, we have to see whether these colors are fast to those conditions of use or not. The inherent instability of the chromophores in natural dyes has resulted in poor fastness to washing and light. Use of mordants definitely improve the fastness of dyes to certain extent. Research in this area is underway to produce fast natural dye shades for textiles commercialization. Majority of the natural dyes produced today or they have the satisfactory fastness to serviceable conditions such as you now sunlight, washing, rubbing and perspiration. Major problems in fastness is found with wet rubbing and alkaline perspiration. Generally neutral soaps have to be used for laundering like we have so many shampoos that we can test it. If it is neutral, we can use them without any problem. Coming to the application of natural dyes, they can be used for coloring apparels, home fun textiles, you know children's garments, functional clothing and medical textiles. However, the selection should be based on the specific end use. Now we have learned the sources of natural dyes, the moderating methods, the dyeing methods, the extraction and the dyeing methods so with natural dyes. So students, I feel that you should be interested to take up the sources around your home and around the parks that are adjoining your houses. Bring these flowers, any flower that is colored, any bark, you know you can try to uh, extract the color from these uh, uh, natural uh, sources and then put the materials and you must be having uh, alum and other things because alum is used for uh, you know purification of water. So use this one for mordanting. Say, put the put little of uh, you know alum in water and then uh, just put your fabric into it for uh, at 60 degrees centigrade for half an hour take it out and put it in the extracted material and dye it for 30 to 45 minutes then definitely i'm sure that you will be able to get the colors actually working and experimenting with the colors natural colors you know it is very highly fascinating to everybody